All right. Uh, good morning, folks. Welcome to uh, this edition of uh, Saturday morning new distributor training. Uh, this is uh, day one of cycle one of period 121. <laughs> I had to double check just to make sure. Uh, welcome to all of you. My name is Fred Holmes. I'm an independent distributor with ZG International. Uh, it's my privilege to be able to spend this time on Saturday morning with our new distributors. Uh, welcome to all of you. Welcome to my home office. I think that's one of the, uh, the beauties of this kind of business is that you can pretty much take a Zija business and adjust how you do that to any particular uh, uh, you know, format that you need. Uh, uh, I personally, because of, uh, of my uh, situation, I'm the full-time uh, caregiver for my elderly mother. Uh, I do 99% of my business is done uh, just like we're looking at right now, I'm sitting here in front of my, uh, my computer and my home office, uh, sharing the Zija message and the natural health revolution. So uh, what we're going to do this morning, and I encourage you uh, to grab your journal. You know, where's my journal? Here we go. I had it out to earlier this day for the Diamond Club meeting. Grab your journal, open it up, and be prepared to take notes, okay? I have, over the years, going back over 30 years ago, uh, archived many, many trainings and, and seminars and webinars now in, in, in today's technology uh, that have really added to the knowledge base and the skill sets uh, of what it takes to be, you know, highly successful in, uh, in, in our profession of network marketing. Um, today is kind of a different situation. Normally, I would do the new distributor training. Uh, but I, I'm compelled right now to share a few things because we have really, really ramped up the, the enrollment process since uh, two weeks ago with our, uh, uh, our, our 2017 uh, summit, our convention for ZG International. Uh, by all measures, the very best ZG annual event that we've ever had in the history of the company. Um, you know, I've had the opportunity, I believe this is my ninth convention with the company. Uh, that was my estimation, but certainly what we learned is by every single measure, it was the best convention that we've had. And so rather than do my regular Saturday morning uh, new distributor training, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Uh, we're going to talk about the elements of uh, what I call the get going meeting. What a new distributor should have is in terms of their understanding and their preparation to launch their Zija business. Now, for those of you, I'm going to take a quick peek here. Um, uh, greetings, uh, AJ. Thanks so much for the shout out. Let's see. We've got, uh, well, I'll tell you what, what's really interesting here is there's a lot of people that I do not recognize uh, that are attending. And so that tells me something that I'm, I've already started to recognize. We are definitely on a momentum roll in terms of new enrollment. And so, uh, you know, certainly welcome to all of you that are, that are regular attendees, but in particular, welcome to all of our brand new distributors. Now, I'm going to direct you uh, to my YouTube channel, especially for those of you, this is your first time uh, joining us on a, a Saturday morning new distributor training. I encourage you to go to my YouTube channel. It's www.youtube.com forward slash Fred Home Zija. Fred Home Zija, all one word. Uh, you'll find a, a, a large number of presentations there. Uh, I am starting to organize them into playlists to make it a little bit easier for the new people to find what they're looking for. Uh, I encourage you to go, I believe it is the June 10th, um, edition of new distributor training. I encourage you to go there. It's a, it's just shy of 30 minutes long. It is the foundational elements of what it is that we do in our business, our type of business, and what it is uh, that, uh, you know, uh, uh, how we do that. Uh, I encourage you to go there. Spend 30 minutes. Learn the things that were taught to me over 30 years ago that helped me launch my career in network marketing. Um, uh, there's several other videos there I'm going to rec uh, recommend that you look at, uh, including, you know, how to create your list of potential prospects like a professional would, how to set up a 90 day game plan, the concept of developing your story. So, uh, I encourage you to go through all of those. What I'm going to do right now is, is my concept 
of how to launch a new distributor. See, in our business, there's, it's really very simple. Uh, I'm not going to say it's easy. Okay, don't for one second think that a guy like me that used to be a cross country truck driver can create millions of dollars of profit. And today, uh, through the organization, you know, tens of millions of dollars in commissions that have been paid throughout my organization. Uh, don't think that that's something that's done, you know, sitting back on the sofa, eating bonbons and watching soap operas. Okay. It is a simple business. I'm not saying it's easy, okay? If it was easy, everybody would do it. But it is simple, and what that means is that anybody can do this if they have good work ethics, willingness to work, uh, they're coachable, willing to learn, and they got that burning desire to provide more for themselves, their family, what have you, okay? So uh, what I look at, and, and the key here I want you to put down in, in your notes is the system, okay? The system is something that's designed to be duplicatable by the masses. It's a simple system. It's something simple enough that it can be taught to the average person. The average person can learn a simple system. And the magic happens is when that brand new person can turn around and teach a simple system to somebody else, okay? The, 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 the secret, if you will, to creating a large network marketing distribution organization, developing a, you know, a huge consumer base is duplication. Duplication is the key to success. Now, what's interesting about duplication is whatever you do is going to be duplicated. Your people will tend to do what you do. And so you want to focus in the beginning on doing, you know, doing the deal in a format that anybody can duplicate it don't make this so complicated and so so unique just to you that it's not going to be duplicatable by the masses so here's my concept what do we do in terms of building the organization and i'm talking specifically about building the distribution team as opposed to acquiring customers okay what do we do well we help people get into the business number one we get them trained, number two, and we get them going. Number three, that's it. Get them in, get them trained, get them going. And we want this process to take place in a rapid uh, uh, fashion because speed, velocity of the, of the growth of your business is key. It's easier to get off to a fast start in our type of business than it is a slow start. And that's a difficult concept to understand. But if you are looking for you know, replacement levels of income, above average levels of income, maybe going on to, you know, levels of income that create financial security, maybe even financial abundance, understand that in the beginning, it is actually easier to put your energy in on the front end and get off to a fast start. Uh, I'm going to try and get through this pretty quickly. I hope to be able to take a few questions. Uh, let me just double check. I've had a few notes here. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Laura Lee. Uh, Christine, always good to see you. Oh, oh thank you for your, uh, for, yes, the, the, uh, the Crystal Award I received was, uh, was incredible. Uh, Desiree from New Zealand, thank you for joining us. I have no idea what time it is in New Zealand, but I'm sure it's not 10 o'clock in the morning like it is here. Thank you for joining us. All right, so these are the concepts of what I call, you know, get going, the get going meeting. Something that is ideally done with, uh, you know, the new distributor ready to get going, the upline sponsor, or if you're pretty brand new, you might want to have your next upline, somebody that's already been around a little bit, has a story, um, maybe a little bit of tenure in the business uh, to help you with this, okay? Number one, step number one for a brand new person, and again, I'm talking specifically to people that are looking to create you know, a larger than average income. You know, if you're looking to for that extra, you know, one or two or three hundred dollars a week, and, and and I'm not saying that as a negative. That's a great thing. The lion's share, the vast majority of ZJ distributors are here for an opportunity to create an extra, you know, uh, let's say two or three hundred dollars a week, an extra thousand dollars a month. If you think about it, for most of the families in America and the rest of the world, an extra, you know. 10 or 12 or $15,000 a year 
brought into the family budget from a part-time home-based business, that would be life-changing. How would you feel if every single month you had an extra thousand dollars left over at the end of the bills, okay? Imagine how that would change people's lives. And that can be done if you're willing to take the time, bring in a new customer, focus on a customer a week, uh, do that for a year, you've got the kind of income that could change most people's lives. Today, I'm talking about those of you that wanna build a business that creates the leverage of having a distribution organization and a large number of, con of consumers that you override on. So the first step is to understand the business that you're in. And there's three basic distribution or business models in the world today. The first one is retail sales. This is the one that everybody understands because it's how we purchase most of our goods and services. Uh, the, you know, the, the, that particular distribution model, uh, the foundation is huge amounts of money spent on advertising and marketing to create you know, brand awareness, product awareness in the consumer, to motivate the consumer to leave their home, go to the store, and buy the product. Okay, retail sales, and in today's world, it's uh, you know online sales, same thing. Okay, lots of that. If you turn on the TV and you watch the TV for any period of time, you know it seems like half the commercials out there are go to you know www.blahblahblah.com and get the product, get the service. Okay, so whether it's online or whether it's you know a fixed site retail location, retail sales is the, 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 the most prevalent and the most well understood distribution model. Now, that's not Zeej's distribution model, okay? We're not a retail sales business. There's no Zeej's stores, um, you know, that, that, that's just not what we do. That's not how we distribute our product. Second business model or distribution model, direct sales. Direct sales is the opposite of retail sales. Direct sales, uh, instead of investing tons of money in advertising, the money is put into the salesperson because it's the salesperson that goes to the consumer to sell the product. You know, back in the day, and you know, I'm sure a lot of you, uh, you know, aren't old enough to remember this, but direct sales, that's how we sold encyclopedias. Uh, for you young people, encyclopedias, that's Google in book form, okay, because a lot of people don't know what an encyclopedia is. Um, you know, we sold encyclopedias, we sold Bibles door to door, you know, the Fuller Brushman, the Avon Lady, that kind of thing. That's the concept in direct sales. Uh, today, you know, the high-end vacuum cleaners, what are they, uh, like Kirby? I, I don't know, I bought a couple of them. Uh, here you've got an environment where whatever it is that you're purchasing, you know, probably half of that amount of, of that cost is actually going into commissions. Uh, you know, you know, a $2,000 vacuum cleaner, I'm gonna tell you right now, that vacuum cleaner only cost about a, a $1,000. But you know, half of that, you know, profit is going to the person that went into your house and vacuumed up the mess they made, the other half is going to the shop uh, that they worked for as, a, as an independent distributor. So that's direct sales. The salesperson goes to the consumer. Now, a lot of people perceive network marketing, which is a third and distinct distribution model. They perceive network marketing to be direct sales. Now, that's understandable. A couple of reasons. Number one, that's what we do. That is what we do. We sell our, you know, our products are sold to the end consumer by an independent distributor, us, okay? We do that, that's what we do. Uh, a lot of people see it as a direct sales business because it's in our name. We're called a direct sales company. We're members, you know, all the legitimate uh, uh, network marketing companies are members of the DSA, Direct Selling Association. Now, the difference between, you know, the, uh, the direct sale, selling distribution model and network marketing is that network marketing has an additional component to it that creates leverage, very similar to the real estate industry or the insurance industry. Uh, let's take uh, real estate as an example. In real estate, you have a, uh, a, a real estate broker and that broker makes money, all the money that's available by selling the house. They can also hire, recruit, train, and supervise real estate agents 
people that come to work for them and they get a piece of what that real estate agent does. This creates leverage. So a broker might be able to sell one house a month, but if they had 10 real estate agents, they might actually sell 10 homes a month and be able to keep maybe half of the commissions that were available. Uh, and so that creates leverage, creates a gr much greater uh, level of income. Now, that's very much like the insurance industry, same kind of uh, concept. Here's the problem with that type of, of, uh, of business. It's called the 80-20 rule. 80-20 rule, some of you, if you're not familiar with it, it's kind of a standard thing that's been around for a million years. It's a concept. 80% of the productivity of any organization is produced by 20% of the people. 80-20 rule. That's just the way life is. It's, it's in everything, okay? For instance, you take, um, you, you know, I'm going to use North America as an example of income, okay? 80% of the income that is earned in North America is earned by 20% of the people. Now, there's a lot of people that say, well, that's not fair. Folks, fair has nothing to do with it. It's not a matter of whether it's fair or not fair. It's a matter of that's the way it is. That's just called life. It's called human, human nature. Uh, it's the reason why in the United States, 80% of the population lives off of less than 60,000 a year. It's just the way it is, okay? Uh, to spend a lot of time trying to figure out why that is and how to correct that, that's, that's like trying to figure out a way to make gravity not work. That way, when you fall, you don't hit the ground. Don't waste your time on that one, okay? Now, in, uh, in, in real estate and insurance, here's the problem that happens. When you recruit, train, supervise uh, real estate agents, 80% of the productivity is going to be done by 20% of your agents. The problem is, is that 20% of high producers, they're going to figure out pretty quick, they can become a broker, get the extra license, and they can turn around and hire real estate agents, and they can make the, the big money. And the problem is, the very best people you get, they're going to leave you, worse than they're going to leave you, they're going to become your competition. Okay, that's the nature of the industry. Talk to any real estate agent or broker, they're going to tell you exactly what I just said. Now. Network marketing distribution model, it's a hybrid. It includes both direct sales and the development of distribution organizations. And the beauty on that, that second part, the leverage, if I go through the effort of you know, recruiting, training, and supervising a new distributor and, and knowing full well that 20% of my new distributors will produce 80% of the volume that I will override on, I am highly motivated to enroll enough people to get quite a few of those top producers. Now, the interesting thing is, if I do my job well, if I'm effective in teaching a simple system that can be duplicated by the masses and help that person become a high producer, help my new distributor achieve their goals, they will never leave me because in our compensation plan, it is a multi-level compensation plan. Real estate, insurance brokerages, those are one level compensation plan. You're the broker, you hire an agent, you override on what they make. That's a one level compensation plan. In network marketing, we have a multi-level compensation plan. So I'm highly motivated because of the compensation plan to not only help my new distributor get off to a good start, but then as they develop their own distribution teams to help the people on my second level and my third level and my fourth level and so on. And folks, I want to tell you, if you look at my organization today, my Zija business today, there are literally dozens, I, you know, probably about, you know, four dozen, maybe more top level producing distributors, people that are, you know, platinums, emeralds, you know, diamonds, diamond, double di triple diamonds, black diamonds, diamond elites, whatever. There are, you know, dozens of these people. However, of though that, that large number of successful, uh, you know, team building distributors that contribute to this huge uh, consumer base that I override on, only two of those people have I personally sponsored. Only two. The, the fact is, is that most of those people that are in my organization that represent the leadership of my team, they're people that I didn't know before Zijit. 
Somebody that I knew came into the business. They introduced me to somebody else. And then that person introduced me to somebody else. And then that person introduced me to somebody else. And you get two, five, 10, 20 levels down line and you find a Barbie stall or you find a DD Shaw. You know, this is where the network marketing profession is so much better than any other business model out there in particular for the average person. So understand the business you're in. You are in the business of developing customers and we're in the business of developing leverage through the development of distributors, okay? And I'll give you one quick example then I wanna move on to the second point. Our job, and, and be very clear about this, network marketing is like any other business. We get paid strictly upon the number of people that consume our product or service. Okay, that's it. That's all we get paid on. We don't make money recruiting. We don't make money. We only make money selling product. Now, you can go out and build a consumer base one customer at a time. Go share the product with somebody, get one customer. Go share the product with another person, go get another customer. Go get one, go get two, go get three, go get four, so on. That You can build your business that way. Here's the problem. How long is it going to take you to get 10 customers? I don't know. It might take you, you know, a week. It might take you a month. I don't know. Whatever it takes you. Okay, let's say it takes you, you know, you get one a week. That's uh, two and a half months, and you got 10 customers. How long would it take you to get 100 customers? Well, 10 times as long. How long would it take you to get a thousand customers? Even 10 times longer than that. And see, if you have leverage, meaning other people working with you, you can accelerate that pace. So give you an example. I could go out and get 10 customers and, and I encourage you go get 10 customers. Okay. That's actually the fun part of this business is helping people get on our products and watching their lives change. Then Go find 10 people like you, people who would like to have more income, more time freedom, more fun in their life, and show them how Azija Business can provide for all three things and enroll those people. Now you've got 10 distributors. What's very interesting is those 10 distributors are also consumers because they consume the products. I consume the products. My customers do. My distributors, everybody's consuming the products. Now help those 10 distributors show them how to do what you just did to go out and get 10 customers you have now over a hundred people in your organization that are using the product the 10 distributors that you that you brought into your into your business and the 10 customers that each one of them has now you want to go from 100 to a thousand real simple you don't have to bring anybody else in teach those 10 people how to get their 10 distributors so they can start having the advantages of leverage. It's just as simple as that. So understanding and being very clear about what our business is, is going to be very helpful to you in achieving your goals because you're not going to be able to make a six figure income, certainly not in a reasonable amount of time if your entire focus is just the development of customers. Now, number two, in my, get, my concept of the get going meeting, I want to make sure my distributors have got the foundational information they need to build their business. Okay, I don't want to just send somebody out there, you know, go get them, Sam. Hope you do well. Call me if you got somebody. You know, I, I know that's how it's done a lot. I just got to tell you, if that's what had happened to me, I probably wouldn't be here. Okay, so. I've put together these trainings are on my YouTube channel. Again, www.youtube.com forward slash Fred Holmes uh, Zija, Fred Holmes Zija. You know, take a few minutes, listen to the, 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 the foundational information of what it is we do and how we do it, the new distributor training. Learn how to create a list of prospects. Okay, I'm not going to go into that. We got, don't have the time today, but I spend probably, I think it's like 10 or 11 minutes on that little video on how to truly set up your new distributor to have a huge number of potential con co contacts to start with. Uh, focus on the development of the 90-day game plan. The 90-day game plan, folks, this is really one of the easiest ways to create a story that will propel your business, not, init not just initially to success, but it's going to be the story you tell 
year after year after year. Okay. Today, I'm going to be real candid with you. My story, a lot of people think it's easy to, to, to be, to recruit a new distributor. If you're Fred Holmes, you've made so much money, blah, blah, blah. Fact of the matter is my story today is, is almost unbelievable. Okay. I mean, that's just the way it is. Okay. Who could ever believe that I could create the kind of income that I've created doing this part-time from home? It's not really very believable. But I'll tell you what is believable, what I did my first day, my first week, my first month, my first 90 days to set this all into place. And that should be your focus is making sure that uh, if you're a brand new distributor starting today, just make a commitment that the next 90 days of your business will be the story that you're going to want to tell a year from now, two years from now, five years from now because that's the only story that's gonna resonate with your next new prospect, okay? And then setting up the daily method of operation. I talk specifically, uh, I think it's probably about 15 minutes, about how to set up a daily method of operation. This is what separates the people that wanted to create success in their Zeej business and the people that have created their success. It is so simple, but the fact of the matter is most people don't do it. And, and, and the exciting thing about our business is there's only maybe you know five or six things you need to focus on. And if you focus on those simple activities, it'll create 80% of the success you'll ever have. And when you start looking at the kinds of income that you know some of our distributors are making, if you made 80% of what they, folks, if you made 80% of what I make, you'd still be in the top 1% of income earners in the country. So 80% is good enough. That's the exciting part in our type of business. Number three, establish some goals in your business, okay? Goals, and, and, and here I'm not talking about, you know, I want to travel the world. I want to, you know, uh, you know, give back to the world. I want to, you know, feed, uh, you know, homeless children or, you know, whatever. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not slight, but you know, those are all, you know, world peace. Hey, listen, I want world peace too. Okay. I want everybody to be happy and love everybody. Me too. Okay. But that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about specific, definable, quantifiable goals that you can use as markers to judge or uh, to judge to your particular performance. See, in traditional businesses, traditional businesses start with a business plan where they set out the amount of capital that's going to be start, that started for the investment, all of the things that are going to be in place before the launch of the business. They're going to be talking about, you know, uh, cash flow. They're going to be talking about, you know, estimated return on that investment during a certain period of time. Because here's the problem. If you're looking at a, let's say, a 10-year return on that initial investment, you better be making certain progress at certain times or else you're not going to get there. Real businesses are set up in concrete like that, very definable, very quantifiable. In our business, it's not that complicated. Here's my suggestion. Write this in your notes. Set financial or income goals for your Zija business. And in your notes, write this phrase, begin with the end in mind. Begin with the end in mind. See, so many people, they look at our type of business, they go, what a tremendous opportunity. You know, I certainly would like to have, you know, that ability to create a, a you know, an above average income, working from home on my own schedule, be able to be with my family, do the things that are important to me, and still make a very significant income. What I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and get started and, you know, I'll dabble with it a little bit, put my big toe in the water, if you will. Let's see how it goes. And if it really starts to take off, I'll devote more time to it. Folks, that's just absolutely silly to start out with an expectation of creating a significant income from a home-based business, but your commitment to it is to dabble in it and try it and see how it goes. Folks, the amount of effort and focus you put into your business is gonna determine your results, pure and simple. See, 
when I first got involved in this type of business, my goal was to create a significant income uh, and to be able to have time freedom in my life to care for my son. And at that point in my life, uh, my goal, financial goal was $100,000 a year, you know, a six figure income. And, you know, as I understood it back then as a cross country truck driver, that was rich. I figured if you made $10,000 a month, you were rich. Uh, I've learned since that time that that's not rich. Okay, that's pretty good, but it's not rich. But that was my goals at that time. And so I had a destination that I was shooting for. Once you know where you're going, then you can route your way there. I use a lot of examples from truck driving. You know, for me to be a successful truck driver, my dispatcher defined where I was supposed to be and when I was supposed to be there. Okay, example, you know, uh, you need to be in Lincoln, Nebraska by 5 p.m. on Friday or else they will not unload your trailer. Okay, so, and I got to lay over until Monday and by that time, the strawberries I had in my trailer, they'd be jam. Okay, <laughs> I had to get them in there. Now, once I knew that, then being in California, I, it was very easy for me to route the, the, my plan to get there, you know, where on the, how, you know, what routes I was going to take to get there, and what point along the way I needed to be each day to make sure I arrived at my destination, okay? Makes common sense. Problem is, is that most people won't do that with their business. And that's a great failing because the potential is just so significant why would you not want to do this correctly? And so when you start your Zija business, you've already seen enough to know what the potential is. Make a decision, make a commitment. What do you want? Okay, and, and don't be shy. You know, a lot of people underestimate or under, um, uh, you know, they set goals that are less than what they really want because they're afraid, what if I don't attain my goal? That means I will have failed. Well, first thing is set reasonable goals, realistic goals, uh, you know, and, and identify a reasonable or realistic time frame. But don't shortchange yourself, okay? If you want you know, a replacement level of income, you want to be able to have the income that you, that you need to, to take care of your family, but have a part-time business producing that, then make that goal. Okay, if you're used to making 60000 a year and that's what you'd like to have as a full-time income from a part-time Zija business, then set that as your goal. Okay, here's the worst thing that could happen. You don't reach your goal. Okay, well, maybe it's going to take you a little bit longer. So then you just readjust the time frame. But if you don't have a goal set in stone uh, and, and a timeline to get there, then using my previous analogy, that's like my dispatcher saying, you got a hot load of strawberries. They're only going to last about four days in the reefer unit before they start getting moldy. Head east. Head east? You know, what freeway? There's about four different routes you can take. Where am I heading? That's the first thing I should know. And when do I need to be there? You know, that's probably the next thing I need to know. So establish some goals. Start with the end in mind, and once you've established the goal, apply a reasonable or realistic timeline. Now, a couple quick points before I move on to the last item. When you're establishing that long-term goal, when I say make it realistic, you have to understand one of the fundamental principles of success. It comes straight out of uh, 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 Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. What the mind can conceive and believe can be achieved. That is a foundational, well, it's a foundational principle in business. Uh, if you look at all of the world's major religions, that principle is in there, okay? In the Christian faith, even, even you know, uh, uh, the faith the size of a mustard seed, okay, can move mountains. And, and forgive me, I'm, I'm not a, a scholar on the Bible, I just you know, I hear the stories and they resonate, right? Uh, what you can conceive and believe can be achieved. Now, somebody might say, well, I conceive, uh, you know, make it a million dollars a year. Okay, well, that's great. Here's the problem. If that's not something that's within your, uh, you know, within your frame of reference, what 
is believable to you, you have actually sabotaged your potential to achieve that goal. Here's what happens. You say, I am conceiving making a million dollars a year. And when you say, I will make a million dollars a year, the words come out of your mouth, they go into your ears, and then your subconscious mind starts to sabotage that goal by saying, are you crazy? You're gonna make a million dollars a year? Dude, you've never made more than 30 or $40,000 a year. What makes you think you'll ever be able to make a million dollars a year? You're just, you must be high. And see, here's the problem is most people don't understand the power of the subconscious mind, let alone utilize that power for their benefit. And so I suggest that you listen to that principle from Napoleon Hill, what the mind can conceive and believe can be achieved. And so the real key here is, and, and I'll give you the example that, that I suggest to most people, let's pick a number, okay? What is your highest level of, of income that you're accustomed to, you know? Well, you know, I'm not making it today because uh, I got downsized, but I'm used to making $60,000 a year. All right, great. Well, you already know that you're capable of making $60,000 a year. And if I could show you how to make $60,000 a year with your Zija business working on a part-time basis, would that be a, 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 an acceptable goal? Would that be a large enough goal, a large enough payoff to justify putting in 10 or 12 or 15 hours a week on an ongoing basis for a period of time, uh, you know, part time in your Zija business to accomplish that goal? Is that worth the time? Okay, because see, whatever it is that you are shooting for, it's got to be valuable enough to keep you doing the correct activities, doing the deal day in and day out long enough to achieve the goal. Now, can you make $60,000 a year in, in your Zija business within your first year? Yeah, we've had a lot of people do that. Um, is it reasonable and realistic to, to hit a, you know, $60,000 a year, $5,000 a month, to hit a $5,000 a month income within your first year in Zija? Is that reasonable and realistic? That's entirely dependent upon you know, one, your commitment to a daily method of operation, your willingness to work, your willingness to be coachable, and the level of your desire to succeed. We've had people do that in much less than a year. We've had people that have taken two and three years to get to that level. What difference does it make how long it takes? I want you to think about this for a minute. How did it take you more than a year to get your education, your experience, and the job that makes you 60,000 a year? For most people, they spent 12 years in, in you know, undergraduate uh, work or you know, uh, up to high school, then another four years in college, maybe a couple of years in a master's program, and then several years in the job market to acquire the skills necessary to make that kind of income. And when people don't make, you know, 5000 a month in their first minute and a half in network marketing, they quit because it doesn't work. Silly. Okay. So start with a goal that is realistic to you. Now, what happens if you set a $60,000, $5,000 a month, uh, you know, I'm going to suggest for most people look at a 12 to 24 month game plan. This is assuming you're willing to be consistent on a daily basis, do the correct activities, be coachable, work with the people that can show you how, I mean, all those prerequisites. I mean, you know, I'm not, I can't guarantee what you're going to do. I just can guarantee what can be done. Now, let's say your goal is 12 months. What if it takes you 18 months to accomplish it? So what? 18 months later, you've got an extra $5,000 a month coming in from your Zija business over and above your full-time, you know, $60,000 a year job. If you accomplish that goal in six months, then great. Then let's readjust what the next goal will be, okay? You can always readjust and refine. That's called business. But establish goals. Start out with the end in mind. Establish a reasonable and realistic time frame and then go to work. Last item I'm going to talk about, and then uh, I might have a minute to do a question and answer. Uh, Set up your own personal game plan, okay? Clear the table. Identify, you know, the, the 10 hours a week, 12 hours a week, 
you know, 15 hour, whatever it is you're going to put into your part-time business. Okay. Set aside the time. One of the best ways to do this, and this is going to be a little bit foreign for some of you, back in the day when I started, we didn't have computers, we didn't have smartphones, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. We did a lot of paper and pencil. I used to have a, a, uh, an appointment calendar, okay, uh, a day timer. I used the professional appointment calendar, like back in the days when you went to your dentist or, or whatever, the doctor, they'd open up this big calendar, it was a book, you know, and, and across the page, was the seven days of the week okay yeah you know sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday each open book was a page or each you know open page was a week and each one of those weeks was in columns and each day was divided into 15 minute increments you know might start at seven in the morning 7 15 7 30 7 45 8 o'clock and it'd run through you know typically six or eight o'clock in the evening that was the week and so it was easy to determine where my time would be to build my, my new business. This is what my suggestion is. Use that concept, use your calendar, whatever it is that you're comfortable using, but start out by drawing a line, if you will, through the parts of the day that are not available to you, okay? Because there are certain parts of each day that are not available to you to build your Zija business. For instance, if you work Monday through Friday, eight to five, you should draw a line from eight to five on Monday and Friday, just block that out, that's not available to you. However, if you're really smart, what you'll do is you'll realize from noon to one, that's your lunch break. So that really is available time to build your Zija business. So you would draw the line from eight to noon and then from one to five. Some of your environments where you have a 15 minute break in the morning and 15 minute break in the afternoon, that's required by, you know, some agencies or governments or what have you. So you might want to make sure that is not marked through. Now there's other things. Okay. You got work. Okay. You got to do that one. That's one of the big rocks because you got to keep, you know, you got to have the job to pay the rent, to feed the kids, what have you. Now here's some other things that you do not want your Zija business to interfere with. Let's say um, you go to church. Okay. Well, Sunday from, you know, 11 to noon or maybe 11 to 1, draw a line through that. That's not available time to you. Uh, you know, well, Fred, we got, you know, young kids at home, you know, we want to maintain the families. Great. Okay. Having the family together for dinner, incredibly important part for you. Well, then draw a line, you know, 530 to 630. That's dinner time with the kids. Okay. Block out the times that are essential to your life. Now, once that's done, you're going to see there's a huge amount of white space on that, you know, day timer. This all becomes time that's available to you to build your Zija business. One of the things, and, and many of you are familiar with Pat Anderson. Pat Anderson's one of our, you know, top 10 income earners. Uh, she, I mean, Pat rocks, okay? Zija is, is, you know, she has a huge chunk of Zija. Uh, the distributor base is part of her organization. She's a master at this. I mean, I wish I could do the things that she does. She's so compartmentalized. She works at 15 minute increments. She'll identify, you know, from seven in the morning to 7.15, she's got a task written in there. That task is gonna be something that will make a material difference in building the business. And then, you know, at, at uh, you know, four in the afternoon, she might have 30 minutes blocked out for a specific team training or whatever. She has mastered this concept of working your business 15 minutes at a time. So an example for you might be, you might log in, you know, you're supposed to be at work at eight. Well, maybe from 7.30 to eight, that, you know, half hour commute you got on the freeway. Yeah, I'm talking about you folks in Atlanta. Yeah, I'm talking about you folks in the DC area and Southern California and Seattle and so many areas, right? That's 30 minutes of time that you can devote to one of the specific activities in your Zija business on a daily basis that will make a material difference in your success. So understand the business that we're in, okay? Understand, you know, get the preliminary training underneath your belt. It's not gonna take you days or weeks or months to do this. Spend a half hour, spend an hour, and then start reviewing that. Make that part of your daily method of operation. Go back and listen to one of those trainings again. Establish your goals, Begin with the end in mind. 
Don't cheat yourself by shortchanging the potential you have with our business. Set the goals, put them in writing, identify a reasonable timeline to get there, then set up your personal game plan. Identify the times that will be available to your Zija business and then keep those things clear. Does this mean, Fred, I'm gonna have to give up bowling? Am I gonna have to give up, you know, Thursday afternoon with the fellas golfing or, you know, Friday night, uh, you know, watching the game or Sunday, whatever. You know, I don't know. How serious are you about changing your life? Okay, how serious are you about creating financial security uh, and financial freedom uh, for you and your family? How serious are you about being able to take care of your kids' college education so they're not in debt? Uh, of being able to retire your wife or your husband from their job? How serious are you about taking care of your elderly parents in a fashion that you would want them to be taken? I don't know. You know, I don't know what you got to give up. Okay. All I know is I'm really glad that I did what I did back then, or I wouldn't have what I have today. So uh, let me do a real quick check here before I close things down. Uh, I golf four hours and work eight hours. I golf four hours and I, oh, of course, that's Pat Anderson. She, she only puts in half a day. Okay. For Zija business is a half day thing. She works for eight hours. She golfs for four hours, right? Okay, very good. Uh, let's see, is there anything else I'm missing here? Um, I think we're good. All right, folks, I'm gonna go ahead and close it down. I, I need to take a little break before the uh, team meeting. Wanna check on mom, make sure everything's going well. And uh, join us back on this same uh, uh, webinar link here at the top of the hour. I'm gonna take about 15 minutes. I'm gonna share some information from the Diamond Club uh, 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 call with Jerem Daystrup and Ryan Palmer this morning, and I'm gonna give you some suggestions on what you wanna be doing this period, period 121, to set up everything that's gonna happen for your business in 2018. So looking forward to seeing you all here in a few minutes. Uh, thank you, Lizzie, looking forward to seeing you as well. And uh, we'll shut it down for now. I'll see you in about 15 minutes. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.